Hi there everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach and welcome to another one of my album reviews. The Big Metallica kick is over, we are back into some other bands again. Sammy Hagar and the Wabaritos, Red Voodoo. Sammy's second solo album after leaving Van Halen. I have covered a few Van Halen albums. I have made my views on Van Halen versus Van Hagar. I like Sammy. Sammy's fun. You know. So, this album. As you can see, I, I, I've left the price tag on it. I picked it up used for six bucks. I actually picked this up a few years back. And... Part of me wishes I had picked it up brand new. There are really some choice cuts on this album. This this is one of those albums. I definitely, for me, it's a summer album. I definitely put it on in the summer. I listen to it quite a bit in the summer. And it's it's really got a great summer vibe to it. So the album opens up with the song Mas Tequila. Mas Tequila is one, Sammy Hagar's tequila brand uh i know he sold it off but i believe he still has stock in it i've had it it is a wonderful tequila oh i was not i'm not a huge tequila fan but this is good now anybody who listens to this song will notice that it definitely has a familiar thing to it um Rock and Roll Part 2. <laughs> Makes sense. Totally works for this song. It's great. I love it. Wonderful way to kick off this album as well. But really, a good drinking song. I, I don't recommend you necessarily do like as many shots as it says in here. But, you know, it's a good drinking song. <laughs> Uh, after that, we get into Shag. Um, it's a good fun song. It's a joke song. Definitely don't take it seriously. Uh, uh, once again, it's a good song. It's a fun song. You can't take it seriously. After that, we get Sympathy for the Human. I love this song. And this song actually still gets radio play every now and then, at least out of the Detroit radio stations. And it's a really good song, and I really love the fact that it gets the radio play that it does get still, because it's got a great positive message to it. And it's a really, honestly, it's a good radio song. It really is. After that, we get to Red Voodoo. Um, Red Voodoo is yet another drinking song, basically. And I don't mind Red Voodoo. Um, it's a little more... To me, it's a little more, I want to say, rockabilly. That's not quite right, but it's got kind of... You could easily play it in a country, as a country band, and with today's country music, it wouldn't really be noticeably different. You know, it, it, it's got that kind of flavor and vibe to it. Midwest, really kind of Midwest-ish, sort of. After that, we get to Lay Your Hand On Me. All right, this song's great. Oh my God. I love Lay Your Hand On Me. Uh, it's got this great old intro, and then all of a sudden it just drops the boom, man. And the drumming on this one, I've, I've spent a fair amount of time trying to master the styling of the drums, the way they're played when they draw that. Because like, it's... it's nowhere near straight ahead, right? Like, it, it, you're really getting into some nice all over the place kind of drumming, man. And, ooh, sweet. And you get that kind of chorus's vocals just over again. Lay your hand on me. 
Great song. Fantastic song. This is one that I really wish did get more radio play than it does because it's really good. Really choice. Choice track. After that, we get to High and Dry. This is a good song. Uh, I had to go and double check. Now, they don't have the writing credits in here for the songs. Like, they don't have the songs with all the writing credits underneath who wrote what. Uh, part of it is in the story, uh, story, uh, story that's in here. They got a nice little, you know, write up in there. But. Uh, High and Dry really does remind me very much of, in parts, the Def Leppard High and Dry. Not quite the same, but there, there's definitely those notions. I can say that throughout this whole album, though. There's definitely notions. Through, like, this album was released in, what was it? 2000-something? Go on here. 1999, okay. Wow. Decent album released in the 90s. Uh, decent rock album released in the 90s. 1999. Um, and there's definitely, you can hear influences from all over rock and roll throughout this whole entire thing. And I'm cool with that. I really am cool with that. I'm cool with bands taking inspiration from other bands and building riffs off of it and stuff like that. I've done it myself as a musician. It's a great thing. Sometimes you hear this really cool riff and you just kind of want to build on it. You don't like where the the band went with it. It's just kind of this cool riff that's in this little pocket. Let's take this little pocket out and let's make that into this, you know, other thing. Or, you know, let's jam off of something else, you know. Like, Moss Tequila is another example of that, right? Um, okay, moving on. Uh, the Revival. It's one of those ones where good song when you listen to the album. When you're not listening to the album, you kind of forget about it a little bit. Uh, don't fight it. Feel it. Same thing. You know, uh, I've been listening to this album a lot. A lot the last few days while I've been working on my gardens and that, getting them prepped for the, up for the summer and that. And totally dig on this the whole way through until, you know, like there's a point where I just lose track of certain songs uh the love is the ballad it has to have a ballad right you know it was funny i was recently watching a thing on youtube where henry rollins was talking about van halen versus van hagar he's definitely much more of a van halen fan because you know you didn't hear love songs coming out of david lee roth's you know thing that was all sammy and he's right you know, you didn't get Why Can't This Be Love or anything like that until you got Sammy in the band. But, at the same time, David Lee Roth is, you know, like, one of the reasons they covered Pretty Woman. So, take what you want out of it. Now, The Love, uh, I do enjoy it. It is a nice song. It is a pretty song. If you've heard any of the Van Halen, like I already mentioned, Why Can't This Be Love? Well, that's pretty much, you know, this. Uh, then next you got Right On Right. This is a good song. Uh, right On Right is a great riff to it. Good vibe, good energy, kind of keeps you going. Uh, and it's a nice breakup between the love and the last track on the album, which is another love track, but not the same type of love track. All right, which is Returning of the Wish. Now, The Love is definitely a ballad. It's uh, a very much a love, love song. Returning of the Wish is a love song, per se, or a romantic song, but it's not a ballad. You know, it's... I wish I could remember the name of the song. There's another song. Um, it's not Why Can't This Be Love, but it's another one from that uh, same album. And I, I'll probably just put it up on the screen afterwards. Uh, where it's a love song, but it's not a love song. You know, and it's... This is kind of more of that vibe, you know. 
It's got some energy, some positiveness. It's upbeat. You're not slow dancing at you know the high school dance to that one. The this you know uh, the love your high school dance music. Uh, Returning of the wish. Out at the beach with your girl. Or, you know, a beautiful night looking up at the stars and you got a good rock album going. You just, two of you are laying out on a blanket looking up at the stars and just talking. You know, that's, that's, that's Return of the Wish. You know, it's, it's not, not ballad-esque. It's, it's good love, you know, fun love, you know. Anyways, last song on the album. Now, normally I would complain ending an album with this type of song, but it really leaves this album with a positive note, a positive vibe, a positive feel. I really enjoy it. The whole way around, I, I've got this album used for six bucks. If you can find it used for six bucks, pick it up. You will not be disappointed, honestly. It is a fantastic album at six bucks. If you have to buy it brand new, don't be afraid to pay a few bucks to buy it brand new. I, I would have picked it up brand new, you know, when it came out, when it would have been like fifteen ninety nine, sixteen ninety nine, whatever. I would have picked it up at that price. It would have been a good buy. It's This is one of those albums where, because I bought it used, it's a premium buy to me because it's definitely, like I said, I put it in every summer, every summer since I bought it. And I've I've personally owned the album now for, it's got to be about, every, about five years, five, six years since I bought it. And I just really really dig it man it's just a good good song and it mixes in with other albums really well too so that helps um yeah so that's what i think we're talking about uh sammy hagar and the wabaritos red voodoo title track is the to me the weakest song on the album so enjoy folks let me know what you think uh comment section it down below i'm always interested in opinions and views i always appreciate when people uh say something Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, there is a link below that will take you to Patreon. Peace, love, take care.